Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, today we're not going to read an article, but we're going to do something interesting. We're going to talk about the Great Reset. Okay, and everybody's going to say, what is the Great Reset? We're going to read a paragraph of the definition of the Great Reset, what people, when they say Great Reset, what we're talking about. Okay. Okay, but we're going to convert it a little bit into how polarized everybody is right now and everything seems upside down and how people seem discouraged and this is not a negative video okay i'm not trying to make this into a negative video i just want to show some of the reasons why so many people are upset mm -hmm. about things the economy politics and we're going to go down a list of things that people are, are upset about and I'm converting that, that there's going to have to be a great reset to bring us back to normal times because we can't continue the way everybody's going. Right. You know, not, not, not being able to afford a house, you know, not, you know, groceries, groceries everything. inflation. It, it's just, it's crazy. So what's going on and it needs a great reset. But the reason why we're going to read the definition is when people say, well, hey, listen, great reset meant from what you're going to explain right now in the first paragraph. So read the first paragraph and then let's talk about what's stressing everybody out. Okay. Okay, what is the Great Reset? All right, the term the Great Reset generally refers to an innovative proposed by the World Economic Forum in response to the economic challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Great Reset is intended to address global economic recovery by rethinking capitalism, promoting sustainability, and incurring, encouraging equitable economic growth. The initiative suggests that the pandemic offers an opportunity to reshape the world economy in a way that is more inclusive and environmentally friendly. Okay. okay. So basically, it was brought up during the pandemic, okay, and saying, you know, because of COVID-19 and everything and handouts and money, maybe capitalism isn't, you know, cracked up to what it should be, okay? okay? I'm a believer in capitalism, but that's just me opinion. I'm not saying I'm right, but I'm a believer in it, okay? okay? But something has to happen or it's going to break. So what I did is, you know, let's talk about housing first, okay? Mm -hmm. In the meantime, do me a favor, if you like these kind of videos, subscribe. It really helps our channel, like it, and give it a thumbs up. And Bill, let's talk about housing. In about 60 seconds, tell me what you think housing is doing right now, and where it's going, and what the problem is. Oh God, 60, it's 60 seconds. It's 60 seconds. <laughs> All right, well, we obviously had hyperinflation with the uh, housing market from pre-pandemic to today. Right. We all know that everything has increased, you know, upwards of 50%, depending on your market. Uh, wages haven't increased with that. And now we're kind of in that position where we have multiple factors affecting the housing market to try to slow everything down, inflation and the housing market growth. With obviously inflation, jobs, housing, everything where we need is everything needs to stabilize. Like we said in this article, uh, what we're seeing now with real estate is things are starting to cool off a little bit. We're not heading, I know everybody loves the word crash, but you know, we're starting to see price reductions, but most listings are probably a tad bit overpriced. And if you look back, you know, prices did come down. People did price reductions before we had the pandemic, which was normal. So we just kind of forgot about that a little bit, but things are still a little pricey and we are still seeing a slight uptick, at least at the, you know, this half of the year. But for Gen X people and millennials, is, is the lowest in ownership in four years, according to another article. So they're having a hard time buying their first homes. Well, yeah, because their wages because didn't the, because keep up with the price, you know, the, the home equity gains that we had. So that's one of the reasons people yeah. are frustrated and there's going to yeah. have to be a reset in order to make more affordable housing. I don't know if the solution is to get smaller homes, uh, government grants, you know, but I'm not a believer in grants and stuff like that because somebody has to pay for it. Right, I, I think with that, I mean, grants are great and there's always been grants out to kind of help stimulate the economy to an extent and then keep the housing market healthy um, because it is a big part of the gross domestic product here in the United States. But you don't want to go over heavy on it 
And what I see from builders and things now, people are starting to kind of transition. The builders here are starting to transition to more affordable housing, meaning the more median price point housing right. so people uh, can buy houses. Here's another one, Bill, that a lot of people are really, really having a hard time is just distrusting the, the government, you know, um, extreme political polarization. So basically, we went all the way to the right and we went all the way to the left and the people in the middle you know they're like shrinking mm -hmm. yeah and i i know friends and family that have broken up i know really good friends that don't talk to each other just because of political affiliation is that it's like the stupidest thing okay oh i'm a democrat so i can't hang out with a republican i'm a republican i can't hang out with a democrat it's just but it's getting worse okay and since the since 60s there was problems 70s because of the vietnam war there was problems but now it just seems extreme what do you think what do you guys think about that one are you guys losing friends because of politics i don't think i've lost any friends per se over politics but i do know that politics is a sensitive situation in any conversation that arises and i mean i've seen more friends fight because of politics than anything else so basically but do you think it's part of one of the things that need to have a great reset basically I think everybody needs to start learning to respect everybody else's opinions we talk a big game on both sides of the aisle mm -hmm. you know left right and middle we all talk a good game oh we just want this we just want that but if you take a step back it's everybody trying to win the argument and prove their point right instead of understanding each other's points if you think about it arguments in general aren't they just you trying, like if we got into an argument, I'm trying to win and you're trying to win, right? We're just trying to prove each other's point. And then somewhere in the middle when everything cools, cooler, as they say, cooler heads prevail. All right, here's another one that, so I think that there needs to be a great reset on that Yep. One, okay. But here's another one that's causing people to get really, really frustrated a lot, okay? The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Right. It is, okay? That's a fact. And the middle class is shrinking. Mm -hmm. Like to become middle class now, you need like 180, 170. Yeah, it's it's something stupid. Okay, so the, the the middle class is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And you know, some people are like, hey, we'll just tax the rich. But even if you tax the rich 100, percent it's still not going to help with the, the deficit. Right. It's not going to help. And don't forget, a lot of them. I'm not trying to defend them, but a lot of them are the ones that produce the jobs. They own right. the businesses. They own the businesses. They own the restaurants. Right. You know, they're there to make money and stuff. So I think there has to be, and I'm, I blame a lot of it on inflation, because that's yeah. what's going on. Like the rich, like we talked about in real estate, the rich are still buying the expensive houses. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But they're not worried about inflation. Yeah, and upper then, middle class and into rich. And Definitely. a lot of them don't care about interest rates because they're paying cash. They're paying cash or they have enough money to, to sustain the higher interest because they know that the equity growth in the property over a five year period is going to outpace the interest that they paid and then they're going to refinance, sell or, you know, pay it off. Now, do you think there has to be some kind of great reset on that to bring everybody more closer to the middle? I don't know what the solution is on that one, but do you think that it has to like the middle class has to grow and the poor has to the poor um, percentage has to shrink and move a lot of them into the middle class i don't know how to do it but i think that's part hmm. of a great reset what do you think yeah i mean it, i mean i think isn't that the no matter what side you're on isn't that the ultimate goal yeah you know so but we always argue about how to get there and again it just goes back to I don't, I don't, working together. I don't know how to do it, but I'm not a believer in handouts because no, you should look. If you're you're down on your luck, I get handouts. You're down on your luck. You need a little boost to get going. Yeah, but I there's got to be a cap somewhere, and I've always said that. So this is not something that my friends think. Oh my God, you changed your opinion on this. No, like I think if you're down, everybody needs help, right? Everybody falls. Right. But it's what you do when you get back up, and if you just keep giving a handout all the time, you know, are you ever really gonna start to? Like, produce. okay, like, I, I saw some, when I was doing some research into this topic, I saw some people saying, hey, we need a guaranteed income, maybe $1,000 a month for everybody in the United States. 
But let me explain something with the guaranteed income. A, that's going to cost about $4 trillion, they estimated a year. Oh my God. The United States can't afford that. So let's say you just give it to people that make $150,000 down. The $1,000 a month for people that are making the poverty level, it's mm -hmm. like $15,000, 20000 will make a big difference. But the people that are making $100,000, $150,000 a year, the $1,000 is really not going to change their life. And from what I understand in the research I did, at the beginning, it'll make them happy, but in the long run, it won't. It won't change, it won't change um, their behavior. Right, because like we've talked about in the past, people always, people, let me rephrase, people tend to live up to their means. So if it works in the beginning, so you get that raise at your job, and it's great, you're like, oh goodness, I can breathe a little bit. But then things that keep increasing, whether it be lifestyle changes, little extra expenditures, or inflation of products and goods. It changes and then it's not as satisfying anymore and then you just need more. Right, so that's you know that's gonna be, have to yeah. be a great reset, I think. But here's another one, and you tell me, these are my opinions I wrote down. Media polarization. I think that the media needs to go back to just reporting the news, black and white, you know, so, so basically if something happened, just explain the facts, okay? these. I feel like every news agency turned into an opinion-based news agency. Yes, it could be CNN, it could be Fox News. Yeah. So if you're a Democrat, you're watching CNN. If you're a Republican, you're Fox, walking Fox News. Or, you know, you try to stifle somebody else's opinion. I think there should be more news outlets that just state the facts. Because they, I don't think a lot of these channels that just talk about one side of the their opinion should even be called news because it's really not news. They should be called opinion shows. Yeah, I can see how that's it's switched because if you do, you watch two different channels, you get the same topic has two different opinions. Totally different opinions. Or views on the subject versus this is what was said, this wasn't. Um, what I, you know, the stuff that I know I like to watch is actually the live stuff. I know it's boring, but then you see what really, really happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and I like that a little bit better. And just the few times with news media that I was involved with, even when I was still on the job at the fire department, you know, how they spin what you said for clicks, you know, yeah. and to fit the narrative that they want to paint. Um, and it, we're not even talking negative stuff that happened. We're just talking, you know, maybe a, a vehicle accident or somebody with injuries or a fire or something. Um, and it just, just to catch the narrative. And almost, uh, for lack of a better word, click, clickbait. Yeah, so I think the media needs to change. I think the media, the news stations, they call themselves news, they're opinion-based, they should be called opinion stations. And I think some new people should come in and create news that the only thing they could really do on that channel is give the facts as they know it mm -hmm. and let everybody else do their own opinions. All right, let's pick another one. Bill, we gotta talk about this one, okay? That's a big divide with people, is climate change. Oh God, okay. <laughs> I'm not denying climate change. I think some countries are pushing it along, and I think it's happened naturally too. But my opinion is you have to come to a compromise. You can't be just all green and not think about the consequences on how people are going to afford it, you know, because it's expensive and it's so, a lot of money is wasted. And who does it affect? It affects the poor people. Right. You increase gas by 50 cents a gallon or a dollar a gallon, you think a rich person is going to get affected? No. no. But at the same time, I don't think you should just dig anywhere you want for oil. Right. Okay? So there has to be like a balancing act. So I personally think that you should go both directions, green and clean coal and clean oil and clean everything, and, and basically meet in the middle. Yeah. So I think people like that are just fighting and saying, hey, you know, we have to go green aren't really thinking it all out on how expensive it is. Right. We'll go bankrupt. Like in one country, I forgot where it was, um, but maybe you guys know, they put such restrictions, maybe it was Germany, don't quote me on that one, but they put such restrictions that people went into the woods and they cut down the trees to heat up their homes because they needed firewood because oil got so expensive. Oh my God. And the whole forest is gone. Right. So you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Right, so you're like, okay, 
you, we don't want you freezing to death, but oil's too expensive. So at the middle of the night, you're going to go out there and you cut down trees and wood to start a fire. Come on. You have to meet in the middle. So right. I think that one's going to be a great reset. It has to be. Yeah, I mean, everybody's pointing different fingers at climate change, which, I mean, I don't know the answers. I don't think anybody really knows the answers. Just the way my personal opinion on it is and what little I do know is that some of this stuff is natural. Like, the, the, we all know that the planet goes through cycles. And, I mean, that's just seems to be a fact. But I just, I look at things like, let's say, you know, battery-operated vehicles as an example. Well, we need those minerals and stuff mined to supply those batteries. And then there's energy to charge the batteries. So are we really doing something different? So what are we, we may be cutting back on emissions, but how many emissions are coming out from the mining process? What natural resources are we extracting that are finite? And then how much is that actually yeah, going to for cost? The lithium. Not only that, but you know, if you say, okay, the United States and Canada has to be, meet this CO2 limit, India and China have to do the same thing. It can't right. be one-sided. Right. They should. Everybody should. Everybody should. Because do their we're, best. we're on the same planet. So if China's producing pollution, but we're okay with it, you know, you can't say they're a developing country anymore. That that argument went out the window a long, <laughs> a long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> All right. Here's another one. So I need. I think that's a great reset on that one. Here's another one. Religious divides. It's like so many people get into wars and because of religion. Right. Okay, everybody has the right, in my opinion, to believe in whatever you want to believe in. And I don't think you should force your beliefs, religion, on somebody else's and tell somebody else that your religion is wrong. I agree with you 100%. Okay, if they believe in what they believe, you believe in what... And, you know, starting wars over it or infighting or saying, hey, you know, we're going to destroy your whatever and we're going to destroy this because of just what they believe in who cares so people need a great reset on that yeah i mean you if you're saying that if you think about it you're forcing if if a specific religion is trying to force everybody to believe what they believe in i mean i don't know i don't even want to go down this road to be honest with you like this is it's just everybody needs to just i hate to say it, but everybody needs to get, get along and res again go back to respecting everybody's differences of opinion and beliefs. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody's just so stressed. And if you really think about it, we're here for such a short period of time, mm -hmm. like a micro, micro, micro second compared to the big scheme of things. Yeah. Like All right. You're born and you don't know if you're going to be, I'm actually writing a book about this. <laughs> You're born and you don't know if you're going to be alive for a month, a day, five years, 50 years, 100 years. You, you do don't not know. know. Right. So as soon as you're born, the stop, you know, it, the clock starts. Yep. But the weird thing is you may know how much money you have. You may know how much assets you have, but you don't know how much time you have. Nobody can figure that part out. Right. You, you could be a second from being gone. So. I think that people need to take a step back, breathe, and do a great reset on all this other stuff in their minds, like just how they think. Right. Don't blame other people for everything. Respect differences of opinion. Respect religious divide. Respect political stuff. And enjoy your life. Be a little bit happier. I noticed, like, you know, we just had the storm come through here. And during the last storm that hit our area, where everything was was really, really, really uh, damaged significantly in the Tampa Bay area. You see two sides of the coin, but what I still found interesting was a majority of people helped everybody. Right. There were very few people that were selfish during that time. Maybe during the melee of like shopping and stuff, you saw a lot of selfishness, but I think once the storm came through and we were kind of in a emergency situation, because we were without power here for quite a few weeks and so that means no stores no nothing but I saw a lot more people helping people during that time no I think I, I think I'm not saying but I'm saying that gives me hope yeah it gives me hope too but if we could just do that all the time but this you know like Facebook social media all that stuff you know it could be a great tool to interact with people from your past and yeah. 
you know, keep in touch with family and friends. I think it's great. But I see people arguing on that stuff and saying some vicious stuff. And I'm like, you're not going to change their opinion. Right. And they're not going to change your opinion. So why even argue? Why don't you guys talk about something that's helpful? And a lot of people are going to say this video is like, you know, I'm just saying that there has to be a great reset before we're forced into a great reset. Right. Yeah. And people would say, what does that mean, being forced into a great reset? Well, tell us what you think what that, that means. Yeah, give us your opinion. Okay. I know this video was something that I usually don't talk about, but I just felt with everything that I'm reading, two different opinions, the news media, the elections, it was something I wanted to talk about. For sure. That's today's video. Do me a favor, check out this video. It's really good. I picked it out for you guys. Subscribe, hit the bell notification, give it a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you in the next one. See you on the next video. Thanks for Thank watching. You.